Hey guys, welcome back to my Practically Imperfect Life. Well, the start of our homeschool year is just around the corner. We are going to be getting started in about mid-August. And July is prep month for me, getting the lesson planning done, getting materials printed, putting things in binders or spiral binding them. And so today I am really working on that piece of it. I have quite a few of our curriculums that either have like PDF downloads of worksheets or the curriculum itself is a PDF download. Um, there are workbooks for me to get put together, teacher guides for me to get to put together. And so today I am doing a massive amount of printing um, on my EcoTank printer, and then I'm going to be getting things just kind of organized. So I thought I would show you um, some of the curriculums that we're using, kind of how they all look print out, and give you an idea on how it is that I create these different binders for my kids. Um, I'm also going to be utilizing my Cinch, which is my spiral binding machine. I've talked about this um, on some videos where I talked about like favorite things for the homeschool and I showed you kind of what the finished product looks like, but I thought maybe I would just show you how it is, is that I put it together, how easy it is to use and why it is that, you know, I chose to get one of those for my homeschool. But so today we'll basically be getting a couple of things around for our next year of high school for both of my homeschoolers. So here is my favorite homeschooling tool and that is my EcoJet printer. So there are lots of different kind of versions of this um, EcoJet printer. I have the ET2760, but I know there are newer models, but I love it because it does have the scanner option on the top, you know, so you can scan things. Um, and you, you basically fill it up with bottles of of the ink and so right here I can kind of keep an eye on the levels here um, I fill it up probably every oh I don't know nine months or so and that's usually because I do a whole bunch of extra printing for more than just my homeschool I print stuff for Sunday school I print stuff for VBS for my scout troop all of that stuff so anyways um, it's really fantastic I'm printing things double-sided right now to get ready to bind but it has been a huge money saver from any other printer that I have had in the past and this thing just works like a beast got almost everything printed that I wanted to. My son's literature came with a CD and for whatever reason, the little CD reader that I have on my computer will not read that CD. So I'm going to test it out with another computer, see if I can get it to work. But um, here I just wanted to kind of show you what it is I'm going to be creating. So I had printed off my daughter's government packets um, earlier when I did a curriculum review. So this is the workbook for that course. And then I also print off the schedule that goes along with it. So that's how guest hollow curriculums work. They provide you with basically like a schedule of options for each week. And I like to have that all printed off in advance. But there were quite a few things for me to get printed. So first of all, my son is doing whirlwind world history from Guest Hollow. So this is his world history course. And this is the workbook. This one is a beast. I have done several courses from them and this is the biggest workbook by far. It was like 300 pages. And so I printed it two-sided because I mean, it was a big book, but look how cool the pages are. So there's all these different activities and questions and things like that that they can do. What I like about the Guest Hollow curriculum is, you know, it tells you like, you know, what it is you're you're looking at when you're trying to find the answers. Um, let's see if I can find some. Like here, you know, if they're doing week six and they're doing the textbook reading online, that'll be in there. If there's map res map reference work, there's just all kinds of different activities. I keep flipping to the same kind of pages here. <laughs> but I mean, it'll tell you what week it is. It'll tell you which section of the textbook the questions come from so they can kind of follow along in there. There is a really nice mix of different activities. Normally I don't prefer to print things front and back because of shadowing, but just given how big this was, I mean there there is a limit to how big of a spiral bound notebook I can do. So I did print off that and then another activity that the world history has is a timeline project. Originally my intention had been to spiral bind these together but because of how big the workbook turned out to be, I think I'm going to spiral bind the timeline project separate. Now, it's going to look pretty boring right now. I mean, it's literally just that, and that's it continues all the way through the modern age. But they have um, a PDF that is 
they're basically like timeline images. So they look like little rectangular pictures with some information and you put them in the timeline, top and bottom, kind of as you're doing those sections. Now I'm printing those off on sticker paper. So I'm uploading the pictures basically onto, um, onto my uh, Cricut design space and setting them up to be stickers. So it'll print them and then it will do the slight cut into the sticker paper so he can peel and stick them onto there. So that is how I'm doing it for that. Then for their chemistry in the kitchen course, so again, we're, we're doing that as kind of a food science course. I printed off the schedule for myself so that way I can do my lesson planning and things like that. And then what I do, and I did the same thing with here, is the title page I will print on cardstock. So that's gonna become the front of my spiral bound notebook. And then I will put a piece of cardstock on the back to be the back of it. And then there is a workbook for each of my kids because they're both doing this course. So their workbooks are all printed off. And same idea, it tells you like which book the information is coming from. There's no online textbook for this course. So everything comes from the different books and the videos, but it'll tell you like right away, like see here, this comes from Dr. Joe and what you didn't know. So they can match those up with the reading assignments. So I've got those printed off. Then my son, for his English course or, or the literature portion of his English course, um, I normally print off all of the worksheets that go with, um, with the actual textbook for the whole year. And so I'm working on getting those done. Now those I do put in a three ring binder normally, but I think I might spiral bind all of it together this year. It just depends on how many total pages we end up with. But these are the two novel studies he's going to be doing this year in addition to the worksheets for the textbook. So we are doing the Fellowship of the Ring. That's gonna be his first novel study. Um, I found this one on Teacher Pay Teachers. Um, I'm gonna do a video talking about like novel studies and my favorite places to get study guides from because I have a couple of different um, uh, sites that I prefer to get them from now. And then he's gonna be reading God's Smuggler. And this one is from Seven Sisters Homeschool. So those will end up going with all of his other literature stuff. And then if we come around this way, um, this is the schedule for world history. I didn't make a title page for it. So I'll just throw some blank cardstock front and back. So that's going to be his whirlwind world history schedule. So this is like my teacher guide for that. My daughter's doing an elective called um, philosophy in the Western world. The textbook comes as a PDF. So I printed that off for her and I will spiral bind that. And then I have printed off all of the tests. So, and then I have my cinch ready to go. I've got all my cinch supplies over there. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with like one of the workbooks and I will just take you through, show you the cinch and how it works and the steps for putting that together. And then we will get all of these knocked out for today. Okay, hopefully this is a decent enough angle that you'll be able to see kind of what it is I'm doing. So I am going to be making my spiral bound notebooks using my cinch binding machine. This is made by We Are Memory Keepers. Um, I got this on Amazon a couple of years ago. I have really liked it. It's made it nice and easy to make a lot of different workbooks for our homeschool over the last couple of years. So the machine is designed to be an all-in-one. It punches the holes for you. You can thread your spirals here on the side and the back is where we actually will bind it. Um, pretty easy to use. The one thing I will say is that you don't wanna lose the instruction manual because what it does is it tells you about these different pullouts here. So depending on the finished length of your project, um, you will punch differently and you'll pull out different tabs to indicate where the final hole is supposed to be in to make sure all your holes are aligned. So from my instruction manual, I know that if I am doing something that's 11 inches long, like a regular school notebook, I am gonna be pulling out tab 10 when it gets time to do that. And they just push in and pull out. The back of the machine does have a tray that pulls out. That's where all of your little punchables will be. Um, and you can empty that out. I recommend after each project, go ahead and empty it because just like any other hole puncher, you know, you can get a buildup of, yeah, you can see a little bits falling out from a previous project. You can get a buildup of paper punches in there or this can get too full and then it won't punch through all of your pages appropriately. As far as how many pages you can punch at a time, it really depends on the thickness of your paper. Um, I prefer to just kind of go easy on it, not try to punch too much at once. So I make sure I have nice clean hole punches every single time. But with a project that's an eight and a half by 11, um, one thing you want to keep in mind is that when we are putting this on the spiral binding, 
Uh, we are actually gonna put the inside pages down on it first, then the top cover, and then our back cover. And I just use, um, I just printed off the title page onto cardstock for the front cover. And then I have a collection of like extra paper that I use for back covers. They're just extra pieces of cardstock. So essentially it's gonna go on the spiral like that. And then when I flip that back cover around, then the kind of the seam of the binding will be hidden from view. So I'm gonna go ahead and just get started doing a couple of my punches here. So I'm gonna take, I'm just gonna take the two cardstock pages first and I'm gonna go face down on this. So the first punch I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna have this little ruler pushed all the way in and I'm not gonna have any tabs pulled out. I'm gonna slide it in, I'm gonna give it a punch and you're gonna see it made my first round of holes. Then I'm gonna pull this out all the way to the side and there's a little alignment tool here on the side. When I'm getting ready to do my second punch, I'm gonna pull that 10 tab out. And when I slide this in, I want the second hole from the right to line up with that right there. And I will give that a punch. And what it did is it finished my hole punches exactly where they needed to be. So, you know, equidistance from the two ends. Now you could go through and you could do the initial punches on everything and then go back through and do all of the punches where you have the 10 tab pulled out or you could go back and forth between the two. It really doesn't matter. It's totally up to you how you would prefer to do it. Um, I kind of go back and forth. You know, I push in and we'll punch, pull out, and then punch. That's just my preference. I haven't found it to be any faster to go one way or the other. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna get all of these holes punched and then I'll show you the next step in this process. So now you can see I have everything punched. Everything is perfectly aligned. Again, I have the back cover on the top and then the next page down is my front cover and then my inside pages. So that is the order I'm gonna to wanna to put them on the spiral binding. And that is done here on the side. So you have these little hooks for your spiral binding to go on. So the spiral binding is available in different colors and in different sizes. So you do wanna pay attention to what size spiral you have. Um, I have one inch ones. Um, I probably should pick up some smaller ones because some of these notebooks really don't need a one inch binding, but that's what I have a whole bunch of. So that's what I'm gonna go ahead and use up. Now the binding itself has two different sides. So you're gonna see there's the side here that looks kind of like more rectangular. And then you have the side that's kind of the more pointy side. So the rectangular side is the side that's gonna hook, hook onto here. And what you're gonna do is you wanna make sure once you slide it on there, that basically you have one of those threads in between each of the hooks. So one should be hooked, one should be loose, hooked, loose, hooked, loose, all the way down. Just make sure it's all the way on there. You are gonna have some excess off to one side and that's okay, because once we get everything threaded, we'll trim it up to make sure it's the right size. And then you're gonna thread your things on there. Now, if you have a smaller project, you could probably thread it like all at once. Um, or you could do it a couple pages at a time. It's up to you. Um, I usually take a couple of sections just to make sure that I'm not missing any threads. And I'll start all the way at one end and make sure I have one thread in each hole and then I will leave the excess out on the side. So that way I'm only having to trim from one side of this project. I'm gonna run, run, run to clear your mind. I know it's all there is to be. So all right, that's what it should look like at this point. And now we need to actually cinch it shut. So that's where the back of this comes into play. So this is where we're going to be doing our cinching. So you can see like when I pull down the handle, that will push down and clamp it down. Uh, on the top is where you would adjust how big your final coil is going to be. So you can see they go all the way down to three eighths of an inch all the way up to one and a quarter and you turn the dial to adjust. So I have a one inch uh, coil. So I'm gonna turn this to the one inch mark there. And so that way when I cinch it down, it's only gonna cinch it down to an inch. To do the cinching, you're gonna take your coils 
And well, first we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna give it a little bit of a trim. So you can see I have this excess here. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cut right in between there. And I'm just gonna use a little bit of wire cutter. So now this is the We Are Memory Keeper ones that I was able to order with the product, but any wire cutters will do. You're gonna go in between those threads there, just give them a little clip. That's all there is to it. They're really easy to cut. So I'm gonna start at one end and I am going to make sure that this is pressed up flat against the back and I'm gonna kind of hold it in place. So on the coil themselves, and I'll try to show you on this little piece here, see how there's the indent? That's what you want facing out when you're cinching. So you want that little indent facing outwards. And so everything else up nice and flat and you're gonna press down, you wanna press down kind of slow just to make sure that your coils are coming together and making a complete circle. So they should make a circle like that, nice and pretty. And then I'm gonna slide it down a little bit further here. I'm gonna get the second portion done. Watch your fingers, you don't wanna cinch your fingers. All right, so then what you can do is you can take your back cover and just swing it around to the back and now the seam is hidden on the inside of our binding. So you can see, I really didn't need a one inch ring for the number of pages that are in this workbook. But again, that's the size rings that I have, so I wanna use them up, but you can order them in smaller sizes as well. Um, I mostly order them off of Amazon, but there's other spots you can get them um, through. But that is my notebook. It's nice and clean. The kids can easily, flip to a page that they're working on, have it open to that page. That is why we prefer spiral binding versus doing three ring binders. One, three ring binders just seem to take up a lot of extra space, like a lot of extra space. And the second part is my kids like to just flip to the page of the workbook that they are on and leave it open to there. So then the next day they can just flip to the next page and keep going. So I am going to work on turning all the rest of these into spiral bound notebooks as well. And we'll have that step of our school prep done. All right, so I got a whole bunch of spiral bound notebooks made today. And that is one more thing checked off of my school prep to-do list. Um, as I mentioned in the intro, I do prefer to do most of my printing kind of all at once at the start of the year. At least the things that I know for sure that we're gonna be utilizing. Like I know I'm gonna be using the schedules from Guest Hollow to help plan my curriculum. I know that we're gonna use the workbooks. Um, when I know in advance that we're gonna use like the worksheets for the literature unit and things like that, those are things I can get done all at once. I can have them organized all in one binding for my kids and then it's just ready to go. Rather than, you know, each week having to think, oh, did I print that? Did I get that printed? I'm not sure if I got that printed and going back and double checking. I just know that it's all done for the whole year. And typically, yes, I will have to refill my EcoTank printer. Um, I will go ahead and I'll get that filled full. And then I will just run page after page after page. That thing works like a beast. It just prints, it prints good quality. It utilizes the ink um, in, at a reasonable level. I mean, given the number of color pages that I'm printing for all of these different things, I mean, I feel like I'm definitely getting my money's worth out of that machine. And then I'll go to like Walmart and I'll buy like the big box of like computer paper when I know I'm getting ready to do my school prep. So I'll get like five or six reams of paper and I'll go through a lot, you know, that is true. I mean, when you have a, a workbook that's 300 pages, so it's, you know, 150 pages front and back, I mean, you're gonna go through a lot of paper, but um, then our usage of paper and the printer will slow considerably then for the remainder of the school year. So tell me, what do you like to do when you're getting ready for your school year? Are you a get it all the materials ready at the start of the year type of person? Do you like to play it by ear and just print things or get things prepped as you need them? Do you do them in sh shorter segments? I know there's really no wrong way to do it. Everyone's kind of got their preference on what works best for them. But hopefully this video helped you out or gave you some motivation to get some lesson planning or from school prep done yourself. I know some of you had been asking about how it was that the cinch worked. And so hopefully that gives you an idea on how to use these binding machines at home. They are worth it. It's a little initial cost to get it, but if you use it every single year, you're gonna save yourself money in the long run and then you can make these bindings just the way that you want them to be. 
If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing before you go. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.